Unfortunately, I'm unemployed since April. I'm one of the last victims of posterity. There is not a single Greek family, I would say, that has not been affected by the economic crash. Greeks lost their confidence in themselves and in the future. Enough, enough, and enough. It's five years now, and we don't, can't fund it anymore. Our life is pretty difficult these times. We don't have... We work a lot of hours, nine to nine, and we are not paid enough. Other times we don't pay at all because they say they don't have any money for us. Unfortunately, I'm unemployed since April. Um, I'm one of the last victims of, of austerity. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, there's no prospect of me finding a job. I'm, I've been sending, since later April, tens and tens of um, peripheral retires and unfortunately I've gone only to one interview, one interview. Um, I am not willing to work for next to nothing. I, uh, I am not willing to put myself and my family through the, this horrific process of um, being paid a few hundred euros for working like, uh, like a slave. I'm trying to keep myself on my two feet in order to, to continue resisting and helping others resist also. But at the end of the day, if you cannot feed yourself, you, you cannot fight. So, yes, I might consider leaving Greece um, by, by autumn if I cannot find a job. Uh, I will have to, to start looking elsewhere, unfortunately. I don't want to leave Greece. I love Greece, it's my country, and I think that if everybody goes, what will stay back? I'm optimistic by nature, and uh, for the first time in my life, uh, it's very difficult for me to, <laughs> to project this. Um, it's a little bit better than it was two weeks ago. If we would be talking two weeks ago, I was uh, considering all my options, and all my options being going to my sister in Munich, for example, and, and just leaving the country. And uh, I'm telling you this, and my wife is uh, nine months pregnant, okay? She will be having our baby next week. This is very heavy, and uh, of course uh, it will be uh, for a short time, a period of time. Uh, but it wasn't because many times since that we have new waves of cuts and uh, new taxes and new taxes and new taxes until this moment. In a situation that uh, I think that it's better to work in a cafeteria as I did like a st student than a lawyer today. There are no money, it's something... Uh, and you work for the banks really. That's a big problem from the new lawyers. The only jobs are jobs for the banks. If I would have two million euros in my bank account and I would be considered a rich person in this country, um, my euros would be in Switzerland or in Munich. I can tell you that much. So, um, my anxiety level would not be that high. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Uh, of course, the, the poor are suffering more. I mean, there's no, no doubt about it. No doubt about it, for sure. I mean, who are, if you, if you look at the characteristics of the people who are now unemployed, most of them are unskilled, okay? Uh, low-level uh, workers, uh, etc. So from the construction sector, for example, because construction has collapsed totally, okay? The skilled, the skilled people who have uh, studied uh, in universities abroad, like I have, like people that I know, 
my friends, uh, they have left Greece. In these years, I saw a lot of people who are uh, homeless, uh, sleeping uh, on the streets of Athens. For example, uh, from my office to the metro station, I used to go back to my home. I count every day about 10, 30 beggars. At 2010, all the streets are full of homeless people. And every day more and more. They are searching everywhere to eat and no one cares, really. It's something that if you don't leave it, you can understand it. We were a, a group of uh, 10 friends. We got together in early 2011. Um, back then, we were trying to raise uh, awareness regarding the, the memorandum that the, the Greek uh, government had signed in, in May 2010. And um, from the first days of the big demonstrations at Sydney Square, we, we went there. Uh, among us was and still is uh, Dr. Vijas. He's the person that had the idea to create uh, the community clinic. Um, he's working for, for the primary healthcare system here in Athens. And back then he was seeing um, a lot of his patients, ex-patients of his, coming and asking for his help because they had lost access to the public uh, health system. Um, here in Greece, if you stay more than two years without a job, you, you lose access. So he, he, he told us the idea of creating a community clinic uh, to provide for free medical services to all these people that were totally cut off um, as a way to resist the, the economic uh, crisis, the austerity crisis. A very ugly, negative oxymoron in our society which has to do with uh, a large, uh, a large amounts of, of food being wasted every day in, in our society. On the one hand, on the other hand, uh, it was 2011, the crisis had already started in Greece and uh, in the news you would only hear about growing numbers of people facing food insecurity, um, needing to go to a soup kitchen or, or, or social service of a municipality to receive uh, food assistance. So that was that was a very ugly negative oxymoron, and we we said, okay, we need to do something to reverse that. What we thought was that we need to connect directly everybody who who has surplus food with all these people who need this food. Okay, so we needed to create a mechanism mechanism that would connect um, these two parts uh, immediately from the largest soup kitchen, which is very close to where we are right now, and. They would tell you that five years ago we had like 80% immigrants, 20% Greeks, and now it's the other way around. That tells you a lot. Okay, so now if you go to a soup kitchen in, um, in the center of Athens, for example, um, you will see everything. You, you will see young people, you will see drug addicts, you will see alcoholics, you will see homeless people. But you will see also people that until yesterday were normal, let's say, middle-class um, people. We don't have a famine in Greece. We don't have like a hunger emergency. What we have is food insecurity, okay? Um, so I say often that we, we donate food, which is calories, okay? But the most important thing is to give dignity. What is more negative is that Greeks lost their confidence in themselves and in the future. Uh, Greeks are in depression. Troika, tell us, there is money for the banks and the financial markets and for the lenders but there is no money for the people. Who creates the wealth? The people. Who are they punishing? Who are they, who are they letting to die without medical access? Who are they not educating so they have a brighter future? The people. So it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense, all this thing that is happening here, here in Greece. 
I'm not defending the old corrupt system, don't get me wrong, but we went from one extreme to another extreme. Many other uh, measures in the agreements we had uh, between, the, between Greece and uh, the Troika uh, led to recession. And that was the problem, recession, the lack of growth. So, uh, I don't think that uh, the most of uh, changes uh, that happened here in Greece were uh, positive. Papadreou made a lot of mistakes during uh, his uh, duty as uh, Prime Minister. Enough, 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 and enough. It's five years now, and we don't, can't find it anymore, please. Something that's killing us, really. I started to realize that there was a, a greater thing happening uh, around us in Europe. And uh, I took, took a, a decision back then to, for the first time in my life, to, to go and demonstrate. There is not a single Greek family, I would say, that has not been affected by the economic crisis, okay? When your economy goes down, detracts by 30%, when your unemployment rate goes from 7 to 27, when you have 30% of your population uninsured, like the people from uh, Eleniko told you for sure, it's, it's, it's impossible that, that, that you're not affected by this. <laughs> The biggest weapon that we have against uh, austerity is the growing solidarity movement in, in Greece. Um, there are about 800 solidarity organizations all over Greece providing free medical services, free education, uh, food, food banks, um, legal services, all sorts of things. <laughs> Big demonstrations 2011 from the first day. I was closed every day at Sidagma Square. Um, back then we felt that something could change through these huge demonstrations that were being held. Um, and was continued up to February 2012. Um, unfortunately, uh, we understood at some point that nothing can change through, through this way because the media, the Greek, especially the Greek media, were portraying uh, these demonstrations in a very specific way that were all troublemakers. 99.9% um, of the people were peaceful and they would always show, show the few tens of people that were creating a havoc. happened overnight, all of a sudden 36% uh, of the Greek people became uh, leftists. We have to make this very, very clear. Uh, Greek people are not really bothered about... Um, we are bothered about politics, but not about party politics. Um, it's, it's, it's very simple, we want an end to austerity. And this is something very unfortunate because I also voted for Syriza and with the hope that something will change. Σε μια νέα εθνική ομόνια, σε μια νέα κοινωνική σύμμαχη.
Syriza a gained uh, 36%. And for the first time, after the World War II, a uh, uh, radical left party came in power here in Europe at least. This is very important uh, from a symbolic point of view. What was the reason? The reason was that uh, Greeks wanted and still want a change, a radical change. And the only party which had a strong enough anti-austerity position with Syriza. You need to explain the question, what is it about, okay? The biggest problem with referendums in the world, in the modern world, is that we are not in ancient Athens, where we sit around and we say, should we invade Vilos or Milos? Uh, let's invade Milos, okay. Yeah. It's not like that. I mean, we are facing very complex matters. And these complex economic and financial matters are not you cannot solve them with a strict yes or no, but by definition, a referendum has to be answered by yes or no. People who wanted to vote for yes insisted that the real dilemma is staying or getting out of the Eurozone. People who wanted to vote for no say no, that's not the question, the real question. The question is uh, whether we will stay in Europe, in, in Eurozone, as equal or as inferiors. The people who voted for no, uh, actually, they wanted to stay in Europe like equal to other people from European Union and the Eurozone. People who voted for yes, they wanted to stay in Europe, uh, in Eurozone, uh, by any means. I voted no, and I will continue to fight uh, the, the memorandums. There is, there is no other way. I vote Syriza, I vote no at the referendum. Every time they asked for us to vote to break this situation, we were there, all the people of my age. The people who voted yes, they voted yes because they wanted to stay in Europe, okay? And the people who voted no, voted no, not because they want to get out of Europe, they want to get, they want to stay in Europe as well. 80% wants to stay in Europe. They voted no because several reasons. First, first reason, the 20% that I told you before, they want to get out of Europe. These are the communists, etc. Okay. Then you had a percentage that no because they really believe that the referendum was about austerity measures. Nobody wants more austerity here. Nobody. I, I guarantee you. Nobody. Okay? Not a single soul of the 41% that voted yes wants austerity measures. Trust me. And then there was another percentage that, and that is something that Europeans, Northern Europeans need to understand about Greece, is that this, 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 this um, folk, okay, these people have a very long history, okay, and in and, and, and societies with a very long history, they tend to be very proud, okay. Um, this means that you can push them only to a certain percentage. <laughs> Να σε νοκουπέρανο, να πεθαίνω που
We strongly believe that this government was working for the good of its people and um, when the results came out from the referendum it was, it was a huge relief for all of us. Uh, it was like uh, the mandate the government got through the elections, it got even stronger now because close to twice as many people said no, we want austerity to stop. So we went from great joy, we went to, uh, to the oblivion in reality. The Eurobank, in uh, of course uh, agreement with uh, the Greek uh, Central Bank, uh, agreed to set uh, these limitations, uh, uh, capital controls, as we know them, uh, and uh, the Greeks had to withdraw only 60 euros per day. It didn't affect me at all, personally, because I didn't have money in the bank. I was not paid for my job and I never stand to the ATMs to take money. So I saw that Greek people were very wisely uh, with the situation. They don't, didn't panic. I expected that the panic will, will be something big, but it was all right. They were ready for that. They were ready for to take the world. At that time, I was impressed by the fact that Greeks were very calm. Uh, they respect each other. Uh, they showed maturity. So, even if they had to withdraw only 60 euros per day, they won't for no. And this is very impressive. With that threat in their head, I mean, the capital control, they vote for no. And that is, that's impressive. Tsipras understood that, okay, I have two choices. I can follow my fellow communists and, um, you know, um, throw this country out of Europe, get our own uh, national currency back, and have all the other consequences for society, economy, everything else that comes with that, okay? And uh, we can discuss what these consequences would be, but 99% of, of everybody who you will ask will tell you that the consequences will be extremely bad, okay? So he realized that, and he said that in a, in a, in a state interview, that in a television interview that he did, and he said, I was between choosing this and destroying half of society and choosing to abide by what my European partners are telling me, which means pass specific laws um, that will help create trust among, among European partners again, just to create the basis to do the other stuff. Okay, because it's just, this is just the beginning, that's the, that's the crazy thing about it, okay? And um, at some point he realized that, uh, you know, he didn't have any, practically any choice and uh, he needed to do that. I'm very thankful that he did because um, nobody knows how ugly it would get, but it would get very, very ugly, okay? There is a, there is a reason why 80% of Greeks say we want to be in Europe. There is a reason. Have you seen our neighborhood? When Fakis uh, was a problem for our creditors because uh, he is a very independent mind, she never would sign an agreement like this. He was an obstacle in that blackmailing of the Greek uh, leaders. It was not easy, and it is not easy to blackmail Varoufakis. 
Rafaik is a very good player and a very brilliant mind. So I think that uh, it was a problem in, uh, I mean, in that operation of for blackmailing Greeks and uh, forced them to sign such an agreement. But if that is true, Varifak fact, it will not vanish, will not disappear. Varifak is, is here and he will come back somehow. Let's talk about the future of the European Union. Two minutes, go. <laughs> I want the Europe for the people, not for the banks. And that's... And DeFi must be sacrificed to have this Europe. Uh, I will do it. We criticize our government. In the, in the same way we criticize uh, our government, criticize, for example, the current course of European uh, administration, of European elite. You, uh, you do the same thing in Germany. Someone criticizes Merkel, someone criticizes, for example, other administrations in Germany. Uh, but this does not mean rejection of the union. Okay? Uh, uh, Europe critic does not mean rejection of Europe. You must not uh, mess uh, Europe criticism with Europe skepticism. The only thing probably that we Greeks <laughs> have taught uh, to the peoples of, of other European countries is that the elites need to listen to the people more. Okay, um, we need to we need to understand that everything starts and ends with the people. Okay, and it's the people, it's not the banks. <laughs> Okay, it's not the multinationals, which are fine. They're doing their job, and if they do their job, it's fine. Okay, but in the framework, in the legal framework that we, the people, decide that we want them to operate, not the other way around. Because if you do it the other way around, you're speaking about another form of society, another form of political system. It's not anymore a democracy. It's an oligarchy of... of um, of financial interests. The natural place of Greece is in Europe, inside Europe, next to Europe. So yes, Greece needs that help. And, need, and, Greece, and, and, and the other European uh, nations must help Greece to help Greece to help itself. That's the question. Uh, we want that kind of help we make us capable to help ourselves. When Troika comes here, here and say, you don't spend this, you will make these cats, uh, this is not allowed, etc., etc., you will sell that island, uh, you will sell that service or that uh, uh, corporation, uh, state corporation, etc. So politicians on one hand react, and on the other, uh, hand the population uh, reacts. Uh, that's uh, why Greeks have that sentiment, uh, have that feeling that someone outside Troika and especially uh, the German leaders like Merkel or Schäuble try to uh, manipulate Greece like a protectorate here. Germany decides strategically to say I'm the leader, which you are, and I will go forward and extend this project and bring it to the end. The end being fiscal union and then somewhere at the end, the political union, okay? Um, hopefully we'll see that in, uh, I don't know, 50, 60 years, I don't know. <laughs>